That sub launched ballistic missile arena of hypersonics in, in the 50s, the 60s, and continues to excel in that area today. Over Dagren's history, we, we've also worked in uh, high speed projectiles, we've looked at different air breathing weapons, we've worked with high speed missiles. Recently, we, we've worked with high speed projectiles launched from electromagnetic launch means. We, we've looked at the hypervelocity projectile, which has attained hypersonic speeds. From an engineering perspective, it's, it's, it's really a great option for engineers to have the design, build, fly experience. That's something unique with Dahlgren, is that we have the capability to design, build, and fly hypersonic vehicles and get useful data from them. The Hypercode was, was a good achievement for the Dahlgren team in, in terms of it being a, a, a rapid prototyping effort. In six months, we went from the preliminary design to a, a fabricated model that, that flew Okay, today we're here in the machine shop. Uh, we're highlighting a uh, hyper projectile that we're manufacturing. This is part of the uh, manufacturing process that we use. You can see we started with the uh, raw stock. Uh, we did a single first setup to uh, get our stock ready uh, on the first setup. And then this is our finished part. What we're actually showing is our second setup. We're actually turning the outside of the part. So we'll give you a little demonstration here. So this outside profile, as you can see, uh, starts out small and it gets bigger. And the beauty of the CNC lathe is it can move in two axes at the same time. Whereas if you were on a manual lathe, you'd either have to be using a taper attachment or turning your compound and turning your dials by hand, uh, the way that they used to do it, you know, pre 1960s. So, so uh, that's the big advantage. And then the precision, also, uh, this machine is capable of. 0 0.002 uh, repeatability and about 0 0.0003 uh, in position. It's highly, highly accurate. Jim's well versed in everything. That's why we, we go to him a lot. You know, like when we first come with an idea, we go to Jim normally because he, he understands how to make it and how to inspect it and how it really works and fits together. He's not involved just in machining, inspecting, but he also helps with the assembly as well, which is the big picture, you know, like getting that part the way it is. What we're looking at today, where we're at now, is a difference between the two different types of projectiles that we fly. This is our, I guess, our workhorse standard projectile. It's a hypervelocity projectile. It features a von Karman ogive, which is um, a mathematically derived profile that maximizes volume um, and minimizes drag. We're next to here, which is very, very similar if you sit side to side. This is part of the hypercone, which is the hypersonics project. This is a projectile that was developed with internal funding at Dahlgren. It was not developed to be a tactical projectile. It was developed to be a research and development pathfinder. It's, uh, it's designed to survive a high, high speed flight in a hypersonic flow regime. In fact, a hypercone was flown uh, at almost six times the speed of sound uh, in June of 2021. This projectile was designed to collect aerothermal data. It's instrumented, it has a telemetry system to send the data it measures back to the ground and talk to us and do so at a at high speed flight. Um, we, we learned uh, costs, we learned uh, how, to, how to design this round to survive uh, EM launch, to survive the aerothermal environment, to be stable and to send back data. Everything gets built here, first time, always. Prototype number one is here. And after that, we can start sending it out to the other shops. I'm more concerned of getting it out of the gun. Once it's out of the gun, I'm not, my job's pretty much over. But then the aeroscience guys take in, and they make sure that um, it flew correctly, it flew to target, it, it tried to intercept the target that we were going after, it, you know, we got good temperature data, that kind of thing. Hypersonic testing and flight is hard to do, but what we can do here can be done at a, at a cost that's much less than, uh, than a sounding rocket. Now, High Rise is, is a facility that contains a, a couple different components. High Rise stands for hypersonic Research Institute for Surface Engagement. Uh, we're we're going to set up a hardware in the loop 
a capability to be able to look at projectiles and, and, and missiles and actually run them through motions and uh, look at how they respond uh, to, those, to those conditions. Uh, we also have a component that you're, you're seeing here, which is an outdoor range with a hypersonic launcher that allows us to uh, launch projectiles up to 2.5 kilometers a second. So high rise is a uh, capability we're building here at Dahlgren to support hypersonics research and development in, in, a, in a variety of facets. There are just so many ways to ensure that we have an influx of knowledge and that we have an influx of creativity related to materials RDT and E. I think what makes materials for hypersonic flight, as we know, particularly challenging is that not just any metal will, will hold up to the, to the extreme environment. Carbon-based materials really are the way forward and modifications to those materials at the basic level, as well as manufacturing considerations with our industry partners are key to you know, being able to develop and resource thermal protection systems for hypersonic vehicles. So first off, hypersonic flight is challenging, and with that, it's very expensive. So to do flight tests, it's costing a lot of money, a lot of schedule time. So the way we, we handle this is with modeling and simulation. So what we'd like to do with any of these kind of systems that are really expensive is reduce that cost by using modeling and simulation. When we look at lower fidelity or lower complexity analysis to take knowledge points and make the results close to a much more complicated model. So Dahlgren does have extensive modeling and simulation expertise here on base that supports um, lethality and effectiveness assessments of hypersonic um, engagements. Right, so an engagement happens to include all these things, right? You got the threat, you got some kind of sensing scheme that's looking at the threat, and then you have a, a ship or a launch location that has some kind of means of dealing with the threat. You are trying to actively deal with the errors that the threat is trying to tell you to follow. Right, so if it maneuvers left, you're going to try to compensate. Right? And so it's kind of this game where you slowly try to get closer and closer until you get close enough to deal with the threat or not. Modeling and simulation, is, it's, it's a tool that we use to understand performance. And we need to calibrate that. We need to, to benchmark those models. And we need to find a way to get uh, inexpensive test data that, that can help, help make our models better that then we can apply on uh, a variety of systems, both defensive and offensive. We see the uh, electromagnetic launch as a, as a way to obtain inexpensive flight test data and inexpensive lethality weather encounter data. And this is a, an, an option that, that we have here at Dahlgren that we're exploring with, with a lot of funds and a lot of good minds to see if this can be applied to support hypersonics research and development. Hypersonics is a thrust in the current strategic plan, like you said, the five-year initiative right now. Um, it is our goal to identify Dahlgren as the surface Navy lead for offensive and defensive hypersonic um, weapon systems integration. And we're also looking to evolve our um, test um, and development assets into national hypersonic assets. As far as the future goes, uh, we expect to become more and more involved in both the offensive and the defensive weapons that this nation is, is assembling and building up um, uh, to, to counter threats uh, around, around the world right now.